Sinestra. Should all go according to plan, this video is posting on Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas to all. To me, Christmas is about kids and creating good memories that you can look back on. One of my favorite memories ever was my brother and I getting a Super Nintendo on Christmas back in 1991, and 27 years later that reliable old thing still works great. Many of us who grew up on Super Nintendo are now parents, and over the years I've gotten a bunch of comments saying something like, Hey, I'm trying to get my 5 year old into Super Nintendo, what games should I pick? So here on Christmas Day, I thought it'd be appropriate to create a list of games for those of you with small children that want to try and get them into the Super Nintendo catalog. And I gotta give a quick shout out to Daria Plays RPGs. She did a video like this but for NES games, so go check it out. But first, I need to address the games that you should stay away from. Stuff like Mario is Missing and Mario's Time Machine. Yes, these games are made for kids, but they are awful. Sure, they mean well. These are edutainment games. They may look and sound and play like traditional Mario games, or I guess in the case of Mario is Missing, a Luigi game. But the way the game is structured is just jump on a Koopa, find an artifact, answer a bunch of trivia questions, and put the artifact in the right spot. Rinse and repeat over and over. It is extremely tedious. Mario's Time Machine is pretty much the same thing, only you play as Mario. I will say, at least Mario's Time Machine has a nice looking presentation, but the game is still an unintuitive mess and a complete waste of time. Avoid both of these games. My go-to pick for a Super Nintendo game for really any young child is always Mario Paint. I mean, it's basically just an app bundle where you can draw freeform, create stamps, animate stuff, and create your own music. The obvious downside to this is that this particular app bundle is uh, fairly old, and you'll have to deal with your kid's disappointment as they see that it's not touchscreen. The nice thing, though, is that Hyperkin makes an updated version of the Super Nintendo mouse that's optical instead of that clumsy ball, so that makes Mario Paint much more user-friendly when you're playing on the original hardware. Hardware. Speaking from experience, I've never not seen the music editor in particular fail to entertain a kid. I'm talking three or four years old here. Sure, they're not likely to create something coherent, but hey, the sounds are usually good for a laugh. Mario Paint is an easy choice because it's just an open-ended sandbox of doing whatever you want. Now we move on to more traditional games, and I think I already know what some of you are thinking. Well, I was four years old when I beat Super Mario World and Link to the Past and Super Ghouls and Ghosts. What's the point of this video? If I can do it, any kid can do it, no problem. Now, this video is meant for a very broad and very generalized audience, and most young children, I'm talking like three or four years old, you gotta start simple. I'm talking single screen puzzle games like Tetris and Dr. Mario. Thankfully, there's a compilation cartridge that combines these two games on Super Nintendo, and both games are simple, straightforward, and easy to learn, without cluttering the screen with too much chaos that it's too hard to follow. And the same can be said with Miss Pac-Man. It's a reasonably faithful port of the original arcade game featuring four different kinds of mazes you can choose from. You can pick the arcade originals, mini mazes, larger mazes, or strange mazes. This is really one of the best games for kids though because it's both two-player versus and two-player cooperative. When one of you eats a power pellet, you both can go after ghosts. If stuff like Mario World or Link to the Past is still too advanced for your kids, then try playing Miss Pac-Man 2-player. It's easy to learn while maintaining a challenge, and the second player option really goes a long way here. Going a little off the radar here with a Japan-only Super Famicom title, another game worth checking out is Sanrio World Smash Ball, where you play kind of a soccer-tennis-handball hybrid game featuring characters from the Hello Kitty universe. This one's all in Japanese, but there is an English translation patch out there. But just to give you a heads up, the first option here is regular one-player story mode, the second option is a password, and the third option is two-player versus. Again, this is a very simple game. Just break the blocks behind the opponent and sneak the ball, or whatever this thing is, pass your opponent to win a point. This game is great, not just because of the simple gameplay or the Hello Kitty characters, but the sound design is really satisfying and the sprite animation is great. Heck, even if you don't have kids, this one is a fun time. If you like that game, here's another one that never left Japan, Heisei Inu Monogatari Bo Pop and Smash. This is kind of like a slightly more advanced version of Sanrio World Smash Ball. It's a larger playing field, there's more special moves, more weapons, and more power-ups and items, so it's a bit tougher, but it's still a good time. Again, it's all in Japanese, but the menu is laid out the same way as the previous game, with two-player versus being the third option. I just wanted to mention this one in case you wanted something like Sanrio World Smash Ball, but just more of it. Plus, this game has a bit of strategy to it that I enjoy. 
Now, when it comes to co-op platformers, it's easy to recommend the Donkey Kong Country games or Contra or whatever, but uh, those games are pretty freaking tough. A more player-friendly game that's easier to get into is probably something like Kirby Superstar, especially the first part of the game Spring Breeze, which is essentially just a streamlined remake of Kirby's Dream Land for Game Boy. Bear in mind, when you start this one, you start as just one player playing as Kirby. It's not until you absorb an enemy's power that you can press the A button and create the second player's character. Like I said, Spring Breeze is the natural starting point here. It's a short and easy two-player game, but there's also stuff like Gourmet Race, which is just you racing King DDD and collecting food along the way. Easy enough. Kirby Superstar is one of the best games out there for young kids because it starts out really easy with an optional co-op mode for additional help, but there's challenge beneath those initial layers once you get into stuff like Milky Way Wishes and Revenge of the Meta Knight. Here's another Japan-only game, it's Do Re Mi Fantasy. This is one of my personal favorites I've found since I've started this channel project thing. It's a bare-bones, straight-ahead platformer, but as you can see, it's got some inventive qualities to it, where you blast through a layer of blocks riding a champagne cork, or where you're traversing the inside of a cake. The soundtrack of this one is also unlike any other Super Nintendo game, in that it's both atmospheric and oddly catchy. It's single-player, but it's still easy enough for kids to get the hang of pretty quickly, and it's a nice alternative to stuff like Yoshi's Island, where the game mechanics can be a bit trickier to get the hang of. Do Re Mi Fantasy was available on the Wii U Virtual Console before they took it down, so this is one you gotta try out any way you can. Like, say, adding it to your SNES Classic. Ah, what the hey, let's bring out another Japan-only game. This one is Crystal Beans from Dungeon Explorer. It's a top-down action RPG that does require an English patch, but it's compatible with up to three players, and it's extremely player-friendly. B is your main attack, Y is your special attack, and you've got an unlimited amount of both. The shoulder buttons are your healing and magic potions, and when you die, you respawn in exactly the same spot, and you've got at least four lives with plenty of opportunities to get more. This is an easy recommendation for kids because the controls are player friendly and because it's an easier and more forgiving game. I should also mention Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. I know I'm gonna get a lot of pushback on this one. Some people feel that a game this simple insults their intelligence even as a kid, and some people may say, skip this and go play Chrono Trigger or Final Fantasy VI or whatever. But my thinking is, why start with the very best when you can only go downhill from there? Work your way up there so you can appreciate the best games that much more. And Mystic Quest isn't a bad game, it's just really easy, and it's structured for people who are unfamiliar with RPGs. So, you know, little kids. So Considering all that, I think Mystic Quest does its job reasonably well. I'll add one more game here just to pick out something less obvious than stuff like Mario World or Donkey Kong Country or whatever, and that's Super Adventure Island. This is another platformer where its simple, straightforward nature really lends itself well for kids to get into, plus it's bright, colorful, and lively with a really cheerful soundtrack. The game is pretty much just run to the right and dodge and defeat enemies while grabbing food to keep the meter up top from running out. It's single player only, but it's a good time, and it's an easy enough game that it's not going to make your kid rage quit, at least maybe not too often. So yeah, I just thought I'd lay out a selection of less obvious games for those of you out there with young children that may be curious about older games. I think it goes without saying that you don't need some random guy on the internet to tell you what your kids should play or not play or whatever. Like of course you're gonna have them play whatever it is that you grew up with, that's natural. But I just wanted to suggest some titles that were a little off the radar that are still kid friendly. And I want to thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your Christmas.